Creek in Rio Grande. So this is the third building Silver Gulch video and you can see things have progressed pretty far since the last video. I've got the bulk of the track work figured out as where I want it to be in the town and I've got this structure kind of blocked in. Uh, let me discuss it briefly. So this is a small freight house. And in full disclosure, I filmed every bit of me making this. But in a colossal mistake, I thought that I had downloaded all of that video from my phone into my computer. And in order to keep, you know, kind of things linear, so to speak, I deleted everything off of my phone before I started today. And guess what? All of that video had not been put into my computer. So this probably should have been uh, building Silver Gulch 4 instead of 3 uh, because I did have a lot of discussion and, and filming of the creation of this building as it stands now. So... I guess it just, it is what it is now. I can't go back and and regurgitate that video. But here it is. Uh, it started all as one shape. You know, in other words, this was actually on line with that. And once I got all of this, you know, as one square block, and I went with a 45 degree angle on the roof, you know, when it was a single square that was actually made out of this, which was the leftovers of my uh, 60 by 60 building. Once I got that into one solid square, I then went in and created the 45 degree angle for the roof. Then I cross cut it here and then glued that back on. And then this is just, you know, kind of there for overall representation of what the footprint needs to be. But as it stands right now, the peak of the roof here, I think is right at 26 feet. And I think it's a little too tall. I won't know for sure until I until I'm 100% sure how tall the dock is because this I think this is too short to actually be the loading dock. I need to come up with that measurement, probably build the loading dock and then figure out where this fits on the loading dock and I think I probably need to come another 1 or 2 foot shorter than what it is right now. At least that's that's what I'm thinking. And then There'll be a freight door on the inside here. And here, there'll be a freight door. And then there'll be a man door here. And I'll have a window on either side of the smaller building. And then I think I'm gonna go with two windows in here on the back side. And I'm gonna use clapboard siding for the whole thing and probably go with a tar paper roof. It's gonna be a pretty simple build. Uh, hopefully I'll get that taken care of, you know, in the next few videos. I don't wanna to get too lost in the weeds on detailing this up until I know what else is going on with Silver Gulch. Now to complement the freight house, I'm also gonna have 
a team track. I can't remember if I discussed this in a previous video because bouncing back and forth between track work and, and what I'm doing here gets a little confusing. But this is what I'm, I'm gonna try and recreate. And near as I can tell, these, these mule wagons here are approximately four feet in width. And it looks to me like maybe you could drive alongside one while the other one is parked. So I believe that this dock is at least eight feet in width. And right now I have it at 15 feet. It, it'll probably need to be more like 12. Uh, that would give three foot of clearance that you could pass one wagon with another. So that's my plan there. So you can see, I'm gonna need a road that comes through here that can go up on the team track and then exit somewhere over here and kind of circle back or maybe come back on this side and, and go back to there. So, you know, all of this will be, I guess, one scene, so to speak. And then of course, back over here, uh, there's another building in development there. I'm not sure what that's gonna be yet. I'm thinking an ore crusher, maybe. I have to do some prototype research. So down on this end, I have railroad camp. This is the mock-ups of the Sierra West model for what they call railroad camp. And right now everything's loose because I'm not 100% sure that this is the footprint that I want. And then of course this track will be developed for uh, the foundry that's going to go in just beyond where this track ends. I've got an idea for that. Uh, I might get to that in this video. I'm not sure. We'll just have to see how things go. But what the first thing I want to do is there's a building right here. that has an angle. So you can see that it's, it's square on one end and then it's got this uh, diverging angle away from the rest of the street. So I need to go in and figure out the length of the two sides so I know exactly what the angle is because I, I would like to match that so that all of the buildings that will run that way are leaving at the angle that I want, and that's gonna impact, you know, the where the street is running that way that I want this building, I believe, to be parallel with. So what that means is I, I, gotta, I gotta come up with a footprint for the building that's gonna go right here. So that's what I'm gonna do next.
Okay, so you just witnessed a lot of indecision on my part and a lot of moving things around, you know, trying to, to develop the scene. And I'm not completely displeased with the way it appears right now, but I'm also not 100% happy with it. So there's a few things that I'm, I'm trying to keep in mind as I develop the scene. And the first point of consideration for me is that the operator, the first thing that they're gonna see is, is this town as they come around from a radius. So they're gonna see the, the town from either corner, either the east or the west corner of the layout. That's gonna be their first impression of, of this town. So I'm kind of trying to view everything through that lens more so than I am what it's gonna look like when you're standing directly in front of it and, and swapping out cars. And my rationale behind that is, is that once you start operating, you're not as into what things will look like as you are when you're walking along the side of the train to get to a location. So I'm putting an emphasis on what the railroad looks like from the east end and the west end at kind of a angle. So what's tripping me up right now, I think is the angle that this building, you know, the one that I just cut to kind of develop this scene with, it's, uh, it's greater than a 45, but less than 55. And that really changed where this street is and more notably where this street is. Because the more I push this street in, the greater that street goes that way. And I don't really like that. So I, I think I need to change the angle that that's at. And another thing that I, I'm trying to keep in mind as I do this is that on the back of this street, which this, this is Blackhawk Street here, on the back side is Sleestack Street. Excuse me, Sealac, Sealac Street. And, you know, there's really only one building there. And then you can see here at this end is, I believe, Town Hall. And I want, I want to model that. And, you know, because I'm going to have to compress so much of the length, is that that street is probably not going to be much there. I'm, I'm probably gonna have to just put an impression of that street and maybe have City Hall just right back there. So viewing it at this end, you can see right in here somewhere is where City Hall needs to be. And if, if Sleestack Street is running parallel with the backside of Black Hawk, then that street would come out here somewhere, which I like that idea. Uh, I just, again, I think that it needs to be at a different angle. So I'm probably gonna change this. So Black Hawk Street and Sleestack Street come together and create Gregory Street that would be in between uh, Railroad Camp and this building going off that way. and that street is where you would access the road to the higher street back here, which is Church Street, I believe. So I'm not sure how many more buildings I need here to give the impression of the street before it turns back because I don't know how much more room that I have on the other side of the plywood there that I've got to work with, and it's kind of hard to know without putting this all back on the L girders back in the room, and I really don't want to do that until I've got everything wired up, but I may have to. I, I may have to come up with a way just, just to throw it up on there so that I can get a good feel for how much room 
I have back behind for Church Street and Sleestack Street, CLAC, and, uh, and then how much room I've got here. Because the more, the more distance I, I go out here, the less room I'm gonna have for the overall mountain, which needs to start somewhere over here on the backside of what's gonna be the, the foundry that's right in this area, just off the plywood. Uh, I don't know, that's a lot of information, but you know, you wouldn't be watching this if you weren't interested in my process for developing what's gonna be Silver Gulch. So I'm not sure what I need to do next. I, I think I need to address this and maybe just get rid of it. And now I, I think I have a better idea of what this should be. After studying the map a little bit more, clearly the end of Blackhawk Street and where Sleestack Street meet, right back behind the barber shop is is where City Hall is and the stairwell that goes up to Church Street. And then there's a flat spot there where there's a post office and then I believe it's three hotels uh, back to back to back. And so right now I, I don't really have enough mock-ups that I can manipulate that area into what I think it needs to look like. But what I do have, I think, is enough information that I can go ahead and determine the location of both of these tracks. And that's kind of where I wanted to be, is to make sure that this wasn't going to cause me any problems, and then there was going to be plenty of room for this industry with a street, even if it ends up being narrower than what the prototype is, which is a distinct possibility, uh, that I could nail these tracks down and go ahead and, and begin wiring. Because another thing that I think I'm going to need to do, in addition to building these mock-ups, is going ahead and putting this back on the L-girders and kind of seeing how it interfaces with the loop that's coming around, you know, the track, so that uh, I, I just, I'm not getting too far ahead and making decisions with too many unknowns. So I'm gonna leave things as they are right now and get these nailed down so that I can go ahead and flip this bad boy over and do some wiring before I go and put it back on the L girders. Well, as it turns out, I didn't have the right gauge wire to do any of the feeder drops. So I transitioned back into scene development mode. So what I've done is by combination of measuring from the map and Using Google Earth, I was able to determine what every building in Front Street here is. And I think I'm, you know, within five feet of being accurate for every one of these buildings as they show up in the picture that I'm making use of. So scale-wise, this is, is pretty darn accurate for the entire length of the street, and I, I feel pretty good about that. My issue is I'm still not 100% sure, you know, what's going to take place on this end. So let's refer to the map. So this is the street, you know, the one that I was just showing you with the, with the paper mock-ups. And, you know, I'm still not real sure about this one, but I've, I've got the width correct and the overall length. So CLAC Street and Blackhawk Street come together and they meet up with Gregory Street. This right here is the barber's shop and the end of, you know, what we're looking at 
up here on this end. So all of this area that is right here is this area right in here. So City Hall is, if you go to Google Earth, it's actually 30 by 30. And then I don't think any of these buildings are there anymore, or if they are, they're, they're really not recognizable as the way they look according to the map. Uh, same thing with the post office. I think maybe the post office might still be there. I'm pretty sure the Star Hotel is. I'm, I'm pretty confident that that one still exists so I, I can get the measurements for it. But, you know, I think what I'm thinking is that I would like to model some of this. I think this would be more interesting than the Pacific Hotel and the Mountain Hotel and the Star Hotel because of the where it's going to be on the map or on the, on the plywood. So that piece of paper back there is City Hall and then that's roughly the same size as the post office. Uh, Width-wise, I think it's perfect. It, it might not be the right length, and then the others are just mock-ups there for looks. But I'm thinking what I need to do is lose one of the buildings here so that this whole scene can shift over, you know, 25, 30 scale feet. And I think that will give me a little more room to model some of this area in here. And then, you know, this can be whatever I want it to be. I don't have to do that per se, as long as I've got the impression of a street and then something that looks like it's gonna go up to Church Street, which actually takes place a lot further down. On my model, it's gonna have to be somewhere on the other side of that building. You know, I'm, I might have another foot to play with on that end to make it a little longer if I need to. Because I still think I've got, you know, maybe another foot. I think I've got 35 inches to the end of, of what I've scabbed on to there. I think I've got another foot that I can play with back there. And then of course it, it narrows as it goes down here and then cuts across there because that corner is actually part of the, the return loop going into frying pan. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm babbling a lot, I realize it. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lose this building here and shift everything to the right, kind of see what that does. I think that definitely helped. It, it helped reveal this area a little bit. So now you have kind of a whole nother new little scene right here. And of course I can put one or two buildings on the back side of this to help emphasize the fact that uh, Sleestack Street is, is running back behind there. One thing that, that's got me a little concerned and it's really you know, not any big deal, but I've got a lot of structures at this end. And by the time I get the foundry put in, you can see over here where that chunk of wood is, that's where the foundry is going to go. And that track will extend to the end of that piece of wood there. By the time I get all that put in, balance wise, the scene is going to be really heavy to the left unless I do something down at this end to kind of counterbalance it. And I, I don't have anything specifically in mind. My original thought was to have maybe an abandoned track, an abandoned roadbed come back here and be on the backside of a bunch of highly detailed trees. That's kind of was my original thought, but I'm, I'm thinking that might not be enough. 
as, as if all of this is not too much already. But, uh, here, here's what I'm thinking, maybe. So this is Church Street where the school and the church is, which I do plan on modeling that, but I was not planning on modeling this ore bin because there's, I don't even know where that would come from. But you can see down here that I think this is a coal dealership. It says coal and then HO. I have no idea what that H, coal house, I presume, and this would have to be office. So maybe this is a coal dealership and maybe that's a building that you just really can't see. I'm gonna to have to do some more research and see if I can find a better picture of Sleestack Street. But this is the big wood building uh, that I've got, and then this would be kind of directly behind it. Maybe there's a place for that over here, and maybe it's either a coal dealership, or I also kind of like the idea of maybe an abandoned mine, where once upon a time there was trackage that went in there, uh, the mine dried up, and they pulled up the rail, left all of the ties, and so there's some kind of dilapidated structures in there that uh, are no longer in use. So that's just something to think about. This is uh, maybe getting a little out of control, but I'm excited about it. This is, this is cool. I really like the way this is turning out. Mm -hmm.